All right, so you're a technician ham and you want to talk HF and you need to make an antenna. A dipole antenna is perfect. And today we're going to show you how to build this one right here. All right, here's a few things that we're going to need for this project. Uh, several things here are just some used items, uh, leftover pieces of uh, gray PVC that we're going to use. These are going to be for uh, tying our uh, antenna lines down uh, towards the ground at that uh, nice angle for your 10 meter. And uh, this is going to work out pretty good. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Also some plumbing parts that we're going to use. Now there's 50,000 ways you can do uh, this project, but today we're going to basically use the uh, plumbing parts and work them just like this. We'll press these in and we'll put our uh, 239 connector right on the bottom like that. We'll put this uh, eyelet on the top. This will hold our rope and then we're going to put some strain release on the side. This is going to get our antenna line out of this uh, T connector here on out this way. And we're going to use this wire right here. This is from a, I think, above a ground a pool pump, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, it was kind of shoved in a box. We're going to take this because it's going to be the right gauge wire that I want to use. This is 18 gauge to uh, make our antennas. All right, the first thing I want to do is uh, put a hole in the top of this T. This is going to accept that little eyelet right there that's going to hold up our rope. So we want to make sure that we're right dead center, which is right there. Okay, because we're using an SO239 that is basically just a surface mount here that's uh, it's, it doesn't have the little flange on there and we're going to put it inside this cap right here. This cap is as thick as these uh, the sides right here so you're looking at about a quarter of an inch and we just don't have a quarter of an inch to be able to attach it on there and be able to nut it down from the inside. So what I need to do is I need to take some of this thickness here and I need to bring it down. And the best way to do that is to take this one inch bit, Forstner bit, and it fits right in here perfectly. And uh, being that this is a one inch uh, PVC and it fits right in there perfectly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our depth stop on our drill press here to go down about half the uh, the depth there so we'll have enough to tighten up this connector and it'll still remain strong. Perfect. Okay now that we got it the right depth we've replaced our bit with a 5 8 bit that's going to accept our connector and we'll be able to install that connector. Okay, once the uh, hole is drilled out and you're ready to put on the uh, connector, put your washer on there. That's the part that you're actually going to solder the, uh, the ground to. And the best way I have learned how to do the nuts, trying to fit it into a small hole like this, is to get your needle nose pliers on there just right. Set it down in there and just screw it on there it goes just like that also the best way to tighten up these connectors because you can't really get a, a grip on it here is grab you a piece of cable screw it on and of course those little teeth bite down on it so you got a place to hold it and you can turn it and get it tight just like that now that connector isn't going anywhere. All we got to do is solder it up. Okay, the last thing we need to do on the drill press is we need to uh, drill some uh, strain relief and also a hole for our wire to come out. Now what I like to do is put a wire right dead center that's where that one's gonna go right there and then the strain relief we can put it down on the bottom here and one right here so we're basically making a triangle pattern like that we'll do the same for the other side over here we'll give you a nice line in the middle so you can see where you're at put that one there and then one here 
and one right here. So you've got a little triangle. There you go. All right, before we solder in our connector, I want to get our uh, actual antenna line into our connectors here and get it kind of halfway wired up and then we can just solder it and put it all back together. I stripped that uh, extension cord that uh, was just a surplus item. It gave me some nice 18 gauge, real pliable wire, which is exactly what I want for this particular project here. Uh, I, I went ahead and just used the green wire and the black wire that'll distinguish my antenna, what side's the ground and what side is the, uh, is the element. So what we're gonna wanna do is feed it through that center hole right there because that's where the line is actually gonna be coming out. But then you're gonna want some sort of a strain relief. So pull yourself about a foot out so you'll have plenty to work with. You can always tighten it up later. Come back through one of the holes, just like you're sewing, just like so. <laughs> and then you go back through this last hole here go all the way in and there you go it's a right dead center but you got yourself a strain relief there and then on the inside same thing you're just going to come and that will actually solder to our connector like that we can take up the slack again when we get done when we get it all soldered up we can take the slack out and then we can measure exactly how long we want this cable to be all right let's just simply feed this through so that we can temporarily put that in just like that and then we want to temporarily do the other side the same way so again go through that center hole that we made bring about a foot out sew it back through into the one of the other holes doesn't matter which one it is and go back down again like that and now you are cooking with gas like that all right, we can feed this one in too, the same way. Let it come in temporarily. We'll just set it on like that so we have our two wires uh, coming out like this. All right, let's go ahead and skin these wires back where we want them to be. Okay, we can now tin these wires and we're gonna go ahead and tin the uh, connector itself. And what I like to do is I like to get a little flux on a Q-tip put some down in there just so it'll actually stick a little bit better and a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. Got our center conductor, got the ground. Now we can take the slack back on this. exactly the way we want it. Put that kind of halfway into our connector. Then we can come back here, take out the slack that we want. Push it in. We want to get as much of that out of there as we can. We don't want a bunch of line left over. Kind of like that'll be good. Then we could just pull that too. Put that in there like that. And a little bit like that's gonna be perfect. Not gonna hurt at all. So there you go. Now we can do the same to the other side. That part is done. And now we can measure it out and do some testing. All right, there's a few ways that you can calculate how long our wire needs to be on this uh, specific antenna. In fact, any antenna you're building, there's a simple formula for it. There's obviously uh, apps out there that you can just punch in the numbers and it'll give you the exact footage of the wire that you need on these uh, dipoles here. I like to do things a little on the old fashioned side. So I like to just, uh, here's your magic number, 468. Remember that number, 468 divide that into the frequency that you're trying to achieve. And this one right here, we're going to the, uh, the 10 meter. We wanna go in the center of the 10 meter band, which will be 28.400 
and uh, it gives us uh, just over, yeah, almost 16 and a half feet. So if we divide that by two, because we've got both sides, each side needs to be its own length. Uh, that's 8.239, so uh, just over eight feet. So what I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna cut this. I'm not gonna cut it at that length. I'm gonna give us a little bit more, maybe about eight and a half feet. All right, before we test this, what I wanna do is I wanna make some rings that will actually go on the ends of the wires here and that will give us a place to attach the wire and also a place to attach our rope so that we can pull this tight. All right, we're gonna do something similar as we did on the side right here for a strain relief so that on the other ends of our cable here, we could have our rings on here and basically they're gonna kind of look like this. The wire is gonna go in, we're gonna drill three holes and it's gonna be pretty much like we did the strain relief on this except instead of a triangle uh, configuration, we're just gonna put them all in a row. So basically you're just gonna put a hole, a hole, a hole so that you can weave this in and out and that becomes the strain relief. And then the other end is where you tie the, uh, the rope to. So let's, uh, let's drill those holes right here and then we can cut the actual rings. All right, all we got to do is just uh, take our wire and thread it through the three holes. Start on one end, bring it a little bit through so you can have enough to kind of work with. Stick it back through the second hole, like that. Then you're going to want to bring it back to the third hole, going back in to where you just got enough going in, and then you can pull the rest out like so. Now, it's not going to go anywhere. You can tie your rope to this and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, I knew that was going to be kind of high before I hung up the antenna. I trimmed it just a little bit because I did cut them uh, pretty long and um, I was going to try to get it pretty much in the ballpark and I would say it is there it is uh, three to one 3.152 to one as you can see here on the SWR I've got it centered at 28.4 megahertz but as you can see the line way at the top up there it's not even on the uh, really on the scale but still uh, <laughs> three to one I think we can do better than that Okay, not too bad. Let's see, 1.8, 1.8, not, uh, not terrible, not terrible at all, but I think we can do a whole lot better than that. Let's cut off another little over a quarter of an inch or so. All right, there you go. We've made a couple of different cuts, total of probably maybe an inch, I would say. Um, not much more than that. And look at that, one, one to 1.3637. Look at that SWR down over here in this corner right here. Look at that. That is just, that's, uh, that's nil. Look down at the bottom. Look at it, just the bottom center of that frequency. Of course, I've got it widened out, but uh, it's, it's, it's centered on 28.4 right now, so you can see that, that uh, yellow line at the bottom. Look how low that is. There you go. Just a couple of snips, and that antenna is completely tuned. All right, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear some stories about some of the antennas you've created.